Okay, let's work some problems, I guess. Um, I don't know how to do this one. Let's go on. Just kidding. All right. Um, a camera has a lens with a focal length of 20 millimeters and a diameter of 1 centimeter. The camera is focused on the tip of your nose, a distance of 10 centimeters from the lens. An extremely tiny freckle on your cheek is 13 centimeters from the lens. From the lens. How big will the blurred freckle be on the detector in the camera? Okay, how do we do this? So this is what we're going to do. Here is our lens. And we've got the tip of your nose right here. And the freckle on your cheek over here. And here's our detector. All right, And our lens has some focal length f. The tip of our nose is some distance p from the lens. And the detector is some distance q. Right, And so we can find where the detector is, that distance right there, because q, as we know, is just 1 over f minus 1 over p to the negative first power. All right? And so that is, uh, all right, where maybe we should call this q knows and p knows. All right? But q knows is, let's not call it q knows, let's call it q detector, or better yet, let's not even call it q, let's call it um, x detector. That's how far the detector is from the lens. And I'm not going to call it Q because now we're going to change what we're looking at and that distance is going to stay the same. All right? So there's one thing that we can find. We can find how far the detector is away from the tip of your nose because we know the camera is focused such that the tip of your nose is on focus, is focused on the detector. All right? So now let's look at this freckle. All right? Some distance P freckle away. All right? How far away is the image going to form? It's not going to form on the detector right because the detector is the right distance away for the tip of the nose to be in focus so the image from the freckle is going to show up somewhere else so q freckle q freckle is just going to be 1 over f minus 1 over p freckle to the minus 1 <coughs> all right so there we have it that's how far away the freckle will be <coughs> now the freckle is further away than the tip of your nose am i right yes i am right Okay, so if the freckle is further away, that means in this case, P is bigger. Bigger P here means we're subtracting less from this, which makes this bigger, which makes when we take the inverse of it, this will be smaller. So smaller than the image for the tip of my nose, right? So since P is bigger for the freckle than the nose, the image will be closer to the lens than for the nose. So that means the image of our freckle is going to be over here. And I'm not going to draw an arrow because it's easier to work this problem if everything is on axis. So we're just looking right here. We say here are freckle forms, right? And then I say, then I want to know how big the blur of the freckle is on the image plane, all right? If the image, if our detector were right here, the freckle would be really, really small. I said it's a really small freckle. But because it's not right there, um, there's going to be some blurring. So let's consider what happens. I send out rays of light from the freckle, these different rays of light, and what are they going to do? They're all going to come down and cross right at the freckle, right? There we go. Add some sound effects. All right. So what we get on the film is this little blur right here, right? And then we just have to say, well, how big is that blur? Well, let's look at half the size of that blur. Let's call half of that blur right there S, all right? And here is the diameter of our lens. Let's call half the diameter of our lens R. How's that, all right? Well, what we've got is we've got similar triangles, right? So here's a triangle. These two triangles have the same angle right there. So that means that the ratio of R over Q for the freckle must equal s divided by that distance right there. Let's call that distance right there. How about delta? All right. All right, so this divided by this, r over q freckle, is equal to this divided by this, s divided by that distance right there. OK, we know the diameter. So r is just the diameter divided by 2. So I can write this, the diameter of the lens divided by 2 divided by, and we, I can calculate Q focus here, that's not hard. That's equal to S. Well, S is half what we're trying to find, right? So what we're trying to find is the size of the blur. Maybe we'll call that, what should we call that? B for blur, all right? 
So this s here is half of that, so blur is equal to 2 times s, right? And so s is blur divided by 2, divided by delta. But what's delta? Delta is the distance from here, the distance to our um, detector minus the distance to the image, right? So I can say the distance to the detector, that's x detector that we calculated up here, minus this distance right here, q focal length. All right? Okay, and so we can solve this. We can cancel out the twos for starters. And then we're going to find that the size of the blur, what we're looking for then is just going to be d divided by qf, and then I have to multiply through by this, xd minus q focal length. All right, now usually I tell you to not plug numbers in until the end, but it looks like this. Is, uh, is this going to do anything nice for us? It doesn't look like anything's going to come out nicely for us. So I suggest at this point, I'm not going to actually plug the numbers in. At this point, I think you can do this. But if you plug in 1 over the focal length minus 1 over the distance to the tip of your nose, invert that, you get xd. You can plug that in there. And then you can calculate qf from the focal length and the distance from the lens to your freckle. And you plug that in there and there. And then you plug in the diameter of your um, lens and that will give you the size of your blur. How about that? Okay, so um, notice though that the size of the blur is proportional to the size of your lens, right? And that's why you might want to aperture your lens down to try and get more in focus when you take a picture. Or maybe you don't care about things being in focus. Maybe you're doing a sports picture and you something's moving really fast. You're taking pictures of the football game and you need a really fast shutter speed so things don't blur due to motion then you want your lens wide open, but that means that uh, some things will be in focus, things further away, they'll go out of focus faster, things will get blurrier faster. That can be a good thing too, right? You're catching that picture of someone catching the, the pass. You don't want the fans in back to be in focus, that's distracting, so it's kind of a nice thing. Anyway, that's what f-stop is about. F, the f-stop, how, how you stop down, make the, at the di effective diameter of your lens smaller, is all about First of all, shutter speed, how much light are you letting in, which determines your shutter speed. And then the second thing is depth of field. How fast do things get blurry as they move out of the ideal focal plane? All right, that was a great problem. I think we're ready to move on to the next one. All right, so imagine you are a BYU physics professor who is too cheap to pay for prescription glasses. You can focus on things far away, but you can't focus on anything closer than 40 centimeters. What focal of length of lens will allow you to focus on things at the normal near point of a healthy eye as if there was anything special about that distance and the people who can focus that closely are somehow better than you? All right, what is the appropriate, what's, the, what's considered the healthy near point of an eye? Well, kind of somewhat arbitrarily, but based on kind of what typical young people with young healthy eyes can see, we say that the healthy near point is 25 centimeters. If you can focus tw on something 25 centimeters away, then they're probably not going to give you glasses. If you want to see something closer than that, you can use a magnifying glass. That's basically what glasses are. They're a magnifying glass that help you see things closer, all right? And if you have a healthy eye, you don't need one to see things 25 centimeters away, but you would need one to see if you want to look really close. You know, look at that ant. And we'll talk about magnifying glasses next time, but that's really what glasses for farsighted people are. They're magnifying glasses that allow you to see things up closer. All right, so I want to be able to see things 25 centimeters away. I can see things that are 40 centimeters away. I can focus 40 centimeters away. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, look, here's my eyeball, and here are my glasses, and there's something right here, and I want to make an image of it out here where I can see it. So this is where my object is, so this distance is P. So P is going to be what I want to look at. So P is 25 centimeters. All right? And then, but I can't see things there, so I need to put an image out here. And so that tells me that Q is 40 centimeters. Not! It's actually minus 40 centimeters, right? Because my eye is on this side. The image is on the opposite side from the side I would look at the image from. All right? It's on the opposite side of where I place my eye to look at the image. So this is a virtual image, and Q is negative. All right. So, um, oh, by the way, since Q is negative, P is positive, guess what? It's a virtual image, and I 
magnification is minus Q over P. Ah, it's going to be a positive magnification. That means it's not going to be flipped over, which is good, because I don't want it, the world to be upside down when I put my glasses on. All right, so then I just have to solve for what the focal length is. And I know that 1 over F is 1 over P plus 1 over Q. So F is just going to be 1 over 25 centimeters plus 1 over minus 40 centimeters to the minus 1 power. And well, I'm going to let you plug the numbers in, because I don't want to pull up, take the time to pull up the calculator. But that's how this problem has worked. So let's move on to the next problem. Imagine that you can't see very far ahead and keep making bad choices because you don't foresee the consequences. Obviously, you are nearsighted and need glasses. If the furthest point you can focus on is 4 meters, what focal length of glasses do you need? Okay, once again, here's your eyeball. Here you got some glasses, and what you want to do is you want to see things, you can only see things that are, what did I say, 4 meters away? So, if there's something really far away, really, really far away, you want to have your glasses make an image of it where you can see it. Well, the furthest thing you'll ever want to see is at infinity. Because I don't think there's anything out there to look at past infinity. Maybe I'm just saying that because I can't see past infinity. But let's assume the furthest you want to see is infinity. That means you're going to place your object out at infinity. And with your object at infinity centimeters, I don't know, whatever units you want, all right? With your object at an infinity, you want your glasses to form an image which is four meters away, right? That's why I said four meters. All right, but once again, your image is going to form on the opposite side of the lens from your eye, so it's going to be a virtual image with a negative Q. So Q is negative four meters. All right, and then we say one over F is equal to one over P plus one over Q, which means 1 over P is 1 over infinity, which is 0, plus 1 over Q, that's going to be 1 over minus 4 meters. Ah, focal length is negative 4 meters. There's the focal length of glasses that you need to correct your vision and make your life better. That's it. Should be easy homework, right?